It's like wearing on your sleeve every influence that you've ever had, like with, with abandon. Oh, going, for sure. Here are some influences. Yeah. I wear them on my sleeve. It's yeah. great. It's a lot of them. It's a lot of them that we share, which is really cool. We're just chilling out and trading lick slashy. We just wrote a riff, which was kind of cool. <laughs> Super fun. We did like a par. Basically, when you meet with a new guitar player and you've not really worked with them before, what I like to do is you trade sections. So I came up with a little idea for a bend that reminded me of the car that we've just taken out, which is a Dodge Challenger. So I was just like, wow. And then he went, ba bow, bow. And I was like, that's a cool thing. So we took the round ba -ba bow, and then I added some nasty Mastodon chord intervals. And then we took it up the neck to a different place and we got a thing now. Have to give a name at some point. We're gonna have to. We could call it. Maybe thing. it's. I think it's Black Horse. Black Horse. Yeah, the riff is Black Horse. Now the reason that my friend Brian Ball has called it Black Horse is because there is a wicked caffeinated brew establishment down the road. Which we're going after this, right? Which we're gonna go straight after this, which makes yeah. the best coffee in America so far that we've tried. In fact, I almost bought a hat that said Black Horse today. I'm gonna have to get you a hat. Right. You're gonna leave here, back to the UK with the hat, and you'll commemorate it with a riff, too. It turns out, and it's it's really cool when this kind of stuff happens, but it turns out that Brian and I have loads of the same influences. So we're similar ages. I'm a bit older. I look a lot older because he's <laughs> Californian. So you've got that young thing going on. Um, but we listened to all the Seattle grunge growing up and then kind of it became a thing in the way that we write our music. Sure. So why don't you talk about your main influences and... Yeah, I mean, I've always been drawn to riffs and there's, to me, there's nothing more powerful in music than centering a song around a really cool and heavy riff. And yeah, yeah the first, you know, elements of, of that for me was obviously Led Zeppelin and hearing Jimmy Page play, I mean, I could name off 15 different riffs he's played and he wouldn't get through half of what he's, you know, it's, it's insane what, what, Zeppelin did that kind of paved the way for what riffs would be later on. Yeah. You know, and then the 90s hit, and I remember, still remember the day the first time I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit, and I saw the music video and the cheerleaders, and it totally changed my, uh, changed everything for me and, and what I liked about music. And then Soundgarden and Fell on Black Days, and the oh, songs came. And that's it, such a tune. It's amazing. And you know, those the 90s influences were so big and are still so big to this day for me and our, our band. And um, But really what hit me kind of over the head more than anything, um, including the 90s, was was hearing Tom Morello and Rage's yeah. first record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and obviously you can hear it in everything that you do when you're writing. So Brian's got a band called Feed the Wolf. Eat the Wolf. Eat yes. the Wolf. I mean, you feed it and then you eat it. And then eat it, yeah. Right. It's really good. Now, I'm not Thanks. just saying that because I'm working with you and I love Unable Strings, I like music and dance. I'm saying it because I genuinely really like your band. And I was sent a list of all the tunes on, on a, a little um, email that Dustin sent me. One of the guys that works there, he's really cool. Check him out, Dustin. You're never gonna check him out because he's never gonna be on camera because <laughs> he's really shy about being on camera. Anyway. He's a director. He's a, he's a great guy. Great director. But he went, oh, check out some of Brian's music. And I'm like, yeah, okay, right. He's probably gonna be <laughs> It's probably gonna be one of those situations where I have to kind of go, oh yeah, I really like it. And I put on the first tune and I was like, this sounds like something I'd write. Oh man. And it did sound like something I'd write. And it's just, it's the, it's that slight Queens of the Stone Age, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, and then it's been pulled forward into more modern influences. Like there's a band that you really like from my hometown, and they're called? Royal Blood, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think they're one of the coolest rock bands to come out in years. And 
Yeah, to do that with two guys is just, it's awesome. Actually, will you pick it up? Hello? <laughs> Hello, John Catalas. <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, let me just pass you on to Brian. <laughs> she thought it was Brian. She didn't even question the chocolate guitars. The here. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you show us? <laughs> Why don't you tell us about your guitar? This guitar, anyway. But that's not your best guitar, that's your best guitar. But for some reason you've chosen to play that one. Yeah, we've, I, you know, I'm not, I don't only play red guitars, but I really like red guitars. These are two of my, my babies, and, and um, this is a two humbucker Albert Lee guitar. I've been playing live in our band lately. I love the shape of the, uh, the body. It's obviously really unique. And um, for me, the, the uh, humbucker pickups sound great with my, my setup with the octave pedal and the distortion. Um, the other thing I love about the Albert Lee is the string spacing. Uh, it's a little bit wider, and I like, I don't know, I just like the way that feels more than um, kind of more traditional setups. Um, has an all rosewood neck, which I really love. That's so nice. It's so nice to play. Um, <clears throat> real spongy. It's, um, I don't know, I love it. It's, it's a, this is right now my, currently my baby, but um, we like to think that all of our Guitars are kind of um, like having a, a child, so you can't say one's your favorite. This is probably my my next guitar I'm going to play live, um, and uh, we just had a show Saturday, so I'm I'm going to start practicing with this one. This is one we're just coming out with uh, this next month. This is the Two Humbucker St. Vincent guitar, um, just a absolute rock machine. And again, I I like kind of maybe non traditional shapes. And uh, you're kidding. Offset bodies, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one has a, a roasted neck, oh. which I love. These um, are super stable. Um, I like to think most all music band necks really are super smooth on the back. So um, this is a really nice and uh, fun playing guitar. The humbuckers were designed here in house by Dudley. Gimple. I was chatting to Dudley just about these actually, and he is a mastermind oh, genius. Because the difference between here and here is unfathomable arrow depths. Oh, that was well said. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Arrow depths. <laughs> uh, Easy to trip up that, and go wrong on that one. Though. That black horse is working really well. Oh, it's sorting me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this guitar I'm gonna play, um, and uh, I'll show this you, one. You should get it in red, though. Yeah, I probably will. We just made one for Tom Morello, speaking of, in red. Really? In fact, he posted it on Instagram last night. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is my. This was actually a guitar I built for myself about ten years ago, and um, this is one of my favorite guitars. I've recorded a ton with it, and um, it'll always stay in my my rack. Isn't it great being able to build yourself a guitar? Yeah, it, you know, it's it's. You try not to too many times, but uh, <laughs> do you? No, because you know when you walk through the factory, it's like it's so easy to be like, oh, I want one of those. Yeah, yeah. but. I mean, we, we kind of try not to because all the guitars that we're making downstairs, you know, for customers and anyone that we build for ourselves goes in front of a customer or dealer. Sure. So. And of course, you're still paying for it, you know, totally. through the business. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do the same thing. I, yeah. We have our own custom shop that's just launched. And so I've already said to other directors in my business, we're just going to make ourselves some guitars. I don't care. We're just going to yeah. do it. Why wouldn't you do it? You know? Oh, 100%. If you're going to own a cool guitar company, make cool guitars. Well, this actually isn't my guitar, but I think I'm stealing it, if that if that makes any sense. That's the St. Vincent. I don't know if it's technically stealing when you are the family member. Yeah, I... Uh, what job title did you, did you give yourself? I, I'm president of the company right now. I uh, was promoted a few years ago, and um, yeah, I've done everything from artist relations, marketing, sales. Um, so no pressure then? Uh, yeah, no pressure at all.
I've got an armada. And the thing about the armada is it divides opinion. And I think what divides opinion is the pizza slice. But I tell you, it divides opinion of people that see it but don't play it. Because when I picked it up and started playing, I was like, holy sh**. This is such a great sounding guitar. And it's resonant all the way through. It's one physical unit. It's just a physics engine that's creating sonic attack. And I, and I love the pickups. I've been honored enough, thank you very much, oh. Bull family, to uh, just pick out some woods and just make one myself, along oh. with an axis. Now that's the funnest part about the factory, is actually going down and picking your wood oh, out and weighing it. And, and it's really cool. It. I love all that stuff. I just want to show you how resonant it is. I mean, I'm using lots of gain, so I'm cheating completely. But you find no. It does a thing where the note turns to that feedback just at the nice. That wave, that what? Yeah. yeah. The guitar company owner and me goes, oh, I should be Chapman only and just use my own thing all the time. And then the musician and me goes, F you. Yeah. I'll play whatever I want to play. I'll take this and put it on an album. I'll take it out live. I'll do stuff with it because it's a different kind of machine sure. that does a different kind of thing. But your family is making me custom two guitars. So it's only right for me to give you a guitar. I, I'm. Bow, bow. Yes, and I will play, <laughs> I will play live. That's my way of saying thank you. I'm, so, I'm pumped, and I will play it. So I'm going to custom make you a guitar. I love it. and I'm, I'm, <laughs> That sounds amazing. Oh, man. Awesome. Well, I'm the same as you. I mean, I got so much respect for so many different builders. You know, John Soar is a good friend. Oh, man, yeah, he's great. Paul Smith, Paul Reed Smith is a good friend, and... and you're a good, I mean, everybody that's making guitars, I mean, they all do their thing and they do it really well. Yeah. It's not like, you know, I love what we do. I have passion in what, in what we're doing and like to think we like to do things, you know, a little bit different. But everybody's got their own secret sauce and spice and what makes their guitars unique. And I, yeah. I think it's, that's what makes our industry so cool. Absolutely. This is just it. I don't make a music man guitar. You yeah. know, you don't make a family guitar. Mm -hmm. They're all great. Yeah. And we can all just be guitar companies together making great guitars. And it's it's an exciting and great thing. We've got to stop doing this because we've been doing this for hours now. Oh, totally. So, Eat the Wolf, check them out. Check them out. And uh, you're on Spotify, but you sell your music as well, yeah? Yeah, we're on Spotify. Um, but get it on iTunes, don't get it on Spotify. Yeah, neither or. Whatever suits your fancy. <laughs> See you guys later. See ya. Better than a lovely cold call interrupting you were talks really, about riffs. You were so kind and so nice, though. Oh, it's, hey, that's not hard to be kind.